Hey everyone, Maury Curtis Dunbar here at Painted Studio. Welcome back. Give me just a second to set my uh, camera settings so that I can see what's going on. And then I can move it out of the way so I don't do something dumb like knock it over like I usually do. Well, that might not be avoidable today because my little brace for my camera is missing or my phone is missing. And now I just need to find myself. There we go. Make sure my volume's off so I don't hear myself on echo. Okay, sorry. You know, it always takes a minute to set everything up once we turn on the camera. So a couple days ago, I was trying to do some heat transfer vinyl adhesive HTVA on a pair of jeans, and it was going disastrously. And I had said during the live that I thought the problem was I hadn't washed the denim and it was the sizing not allowing the denim to grab the adhesive and get a good release. Well, guess what? I was right. I took the jeans home plus the other jeans I was going to do with them, washed them, dried them, brought them back, and I am getting so much better release from my product. So I did a whole bunch of stuff on these to test it out. I didn't want to come on live and have it be a disaster again and me not knowing why. So now I do know why. Um, now what I'm going to do is flip the camera down so you can see. We're working on, on these now. Let me get a good look and see if you can see. Yep. We are angled so that you can see them. I'm going to put my camera, my phone in a place where I can actually reach it if I need to adjust. Now, you can see yesterday, this is a different pair of jeans than the other ones. I needed a couple of pairs um, to work on so that uh, I needed some straight leg jeans to go over some boots in the fall. So I bought a couple very inexpensive pairs of jeans, thought I'd play with them. Uh, I've cut patterns out in HTVA. I've released them. I need to make sure my iron's turned on behind me as we're going to get going on that shortly. And learned, uh, reminded myself a few things because it went so easily on the apron, I could not figure out what my problem was. Well, as you can see, I'm getting really nice release now. So I've got these branches going across my jeans leg. I really like them. There was a little spot of adhesive that I wanted to have happen there that didn't happen, but you know that, oh well, I, at least I know I've got this going right. Now I have one more set of branches that I need to pull off the uh, backing film, or I shouldn't say the backing film, the exterior HTVA, because I've weeded out the center and I always try to leave the in outside bits until just before I put it on the surface because uh, it's this stuff is sticky. The, bat, the mounting film is sticky and it just makes it much easier if I don't have it all peeled out like this be, right until right before. Now I do have stuff that I was peeling earlier today so it's ready to go but I just wanted to remind you all that you have to peel off all the exterior if you're transferring an image you gotta get all of this off and all of this stuff you want to take away from your surface and I have a little garbage bag sitting next to me and you want to put it all in the trash now when I use this on my Cricut maker they don't have a specific setting for heat transfer vinyl adhesive so I use the uh, stencil vinyl setting and I have it set on, when it comes to the pressure, it's, it's got default more or less. I use more because this is a little thicker and a little bit stretchier than standard stencil vinyl. So you wanna make sure it gets cut all the way through. And I get a good clean cut with it that way. And all this stuff that I'm peeling off is potential adhesive but I don't need it for my image. I know, I, I peel all this off and I go, oh God, I feel like I'm throwing away so much stuff. Um, and you kind of are. That's why I keep all my little odd pieces when I can. And then I, um, re I, I, when I did all the stuff for these jeans, I had all these random little pieces that I used and used up like all my odd bits of leftover um, HTVA 
that I had had other patterns cut into and I was able to cut, you know, around them and have big open spaces that I could then remount on a, a mat and cut again. This, there isn't enough there for me to really work with. Uh, let's uh, pull all the rest of this out. There we go, we've got it all there. I wanna make sure I don't have, you don't want any of this stuff <laughs> left around your um, iron because it will melt on your iron and you won't be happy. Hey Susie, nice to see you here. Okay, so I'm gonna put, let's see, where do I wanna put this one? I'm gonna stick this one. I might actually do it up a little higher come down because I have one more branch that eventually will end up on here. And then I also have a dragonfly. Now the dragonfly I pre-weeded and pulled out because as you can see that detail there is really intense. Let me zoom in a little bit. That detail is extremely intense and I didn't want to um, have an issue with it. So I'm gonna actually put the dragonfly down low here so it's sort of flying up into these flowers. So I'm gonna pull that. I've got that set and the next thing I wanna do is make sure I get out the um, foils that I wanna use. Of course, you wanna use a fabric-friendly foil. So since dragonflies tend to be iridescent, I'm gonna use a piece of this Olsen foil, which changes color in the light to go over the dragonfly. I'm going to put my scissors back behind me because I put everything right in front of me and then I end up with big messes and again, that's how I end up with the heat transfer glue on stuff. <laughs> Let's try not to do that. So I've got that cut and then that branch that's sitting right there. Let me get this tape back up. I think what I wanted to do was use a little pebbles deep blue. I think that would be pretty on that. So I'm going to cut a little piece. Yes, I'm on a little earlier than I normally am, but I'm working on about a gazillion things today and I didn't want to miss you. Yesterday I tried to get this done and I could not get five minutes that, whoops, drop that on the floor. I could not get five minutes that let me do anything other than try to play catch up. So first thing I'm going to do is iron this on. And I've got my iron set to cotton. You can start with silk. It just depends on your iron. Um, and it also depends on the surface. I need to use... Um, cotton on this and then I want to push down a little bit because I want that to really grab on okay now the other thing I discovered doing this on denim is heating it up right before you start pulling it back and you get a much better release making sure it's good and hot right where you're pulling it off from and you have a much better release of your vinyl adhesive. And we've got a nice release right there. And it looks like there's still pattern on here. There isn't. That's where the cutter etched into the backing film. So I'm going to put my... I need to cut this down just a little bit. I'm going to put the foil right there over that. Now, I'm not ironing that one yet. I'm just going to let that hot spot stay warm for a minute because I'm also going to come up here and I'm going to release this one. Now I've got that branch right there. Warm it up first and then come in and press a little bit. Give a little pressure. Denim, because it's a coarser fabric, the pressure helps to really get it to grab. And again, like I said before, pulling it up while it's really nice and warm 
helps you get a much better release of your pattern. Go. came off nicely set my iron back behind me for a second so that I can then put my piece of foil over this smooth it down now I've got both pieces on here I'm going to take parchment paper you can use an ironing cloth and as you see I'm working on a piece of wood but I will tell you right now if I had a bigger piece of wood it would be easier for the design I have um, you can use cardboard as long as it's not corrugated. Corrugated cardboard does not work very well. It actually presses the ripples into the, the design. You don't want that. All right, now I'm going to come in here again. Pressure and heat. Now, if you remember me doing the aprons, I didn't have to put pressure like this on there. But the apron was a slightly thinner, slightly smoother, duck cloth kind of fabric where denim is much coarser. And it can be really challenging to work on the denim. Now, let me move things around. Check and make sure I'm stuck to every place I want to be stuck. Um, and the reason I'm using this is though that even though the um, foil is designed to handle heat, the backing film can kind of get a little melty if you have to use a higher heat. And so having the paper between the denim, the parchment paper between the denim and the foil protects your iron, protects the foil, helps you get a better release, all of that. And you see my paper is just sort of sliding around. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter if I scorch the paper. You can also use a tea towel or an ironing cloth if you're somebody who has those. I just use parchment paper. It's the same parchment paper you use in the kitchen for baking because it doesn't stick to anything and it's a nice isolating barrier for me. Now, I can see pretty well that everything's stuck. I'm going to make sure. You can see it's pretty well stuck because you should be able to see pretty well a little hint of your pattern in the foil. It's harder to see on pattern foils, but on a more solid one, you can see it pretty easily. I just want to get back down at that tail spot right there. Okay, now put my iron away. Now you have to let this cool. It needs to be completely cool. We're gonna work on this pair next. This was the one I struggled with badly the first day. And as you can see, when I pull this up, I'll, you'll be able to see where the pattern went well and where it went bad. So. Here it was struggling, here it was struggling, here I had a great release. Back behind here is a little shadow of another one that went on there and it was just a disaster. All right, so where did my little, oh, they fell on the floor, hang on. This is sort of my little wildflower garden on my pants, so I don't mind the irregularities. It's not gonna hurt a darn thing. I'm just going to kind of tack this up in here so it looks like it's part of something else. And then I also got a little, much bigger, but a little honeybee. I had a little honeybee cut out to kind of come over the leg. And yes, there's schmutz on here from having it drop on the floor. That won't hurt anything. It won't affect the foil release. And what's more, it will wash off if it transfers onto my jeans because it'll come off. This is, there's nothing that releases from here other than the HTVA that's permanent. So we're gonna put that on there. And again, 
you're putting the sticky side, the side that you have weeded. This is where your HTVA is. Once you've weeded the pattern out, you flip it over, stick it to the surface. That adhesiveness uh, that hold held the film onto there or held the uh, vinyl adhesive on there will also help hold it to your fabric until you're ready to um, iron and release it. Okay, let's work on my B a little bit. Okay, a little pressure. And it turns clear, and that signals that it's ready to be peeled back. And you should be able to see the sheen of the adhesive on your fabric. All right, that peeled back nicely. Let's put that in there. And I thought it would be fun for the bee to use the yellow, green, and gold stripe foil. And I do wear these clothes. I know you all think that I make these and then they just go into a hole, but no, I wear, when I put these things on my clothes, I do wear them. I mean, I've paid money for clothes to wear. That's part of why I'm designing them in different patterns and different colors to go with different things. I know what's in my closet, so I already have ideas of what I'm going to wear it with. All right, so I need one more little tiny bit of pattern somewhere to go on this. And I think since I had no really good release with any razzle-dazzle on there before, we'll do a little razzle-dazzle. I think that's good. I'm looking at all my foils that are lined up next to me. I, I pulled down um, a whole bouquet, literally, of foils. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen different patterns because I really wasn't sure what I wanted to go wear. I, I knew my color story. I just hadn't decided exactly how I wanted everything to go. So I'm going to release this one. Let's warm that up nicely. Make sure everything's ready to release. Again, a little bit of pressure. Peel off pretty well. well. That's not wanting to peel off everywhere. These are going to be the jeans that I'm just going to be looking at going, God damn, nothing wanted to go on there easily, did it? It almost looks like paint splotch. When I got really frustrated and couldn't make anything work because it was really hot and humid in here, just like it is everywhere else around the country, I was coming up with ideas to do different things. All right, let's iron on here, iron on our little B. Iron on here. I might have a little bit of sticky stuff still there. That's the way that grabbed a little bit on my iron. So I may just stick that piece over there and see if it picks up any residual foil adhesive. I'm gonna get as much pattern released as possible because it acts something actually stuck to the bottom of my iron. Get it all on there. I'm just going to make this a watercolor. The other pair of jeans clearly was coming out. I, I resolved the problem before I even tried the first piece on that other pair of jeans. So clearly 
they are going to have the better pattern initially, but I do have ideas of how to get what I want done there, so I'm pretty excited. All right, so we're going to let that pair cool as well. And again, you can see this faint outline of the pattern having grabbed onto the jeans. So let's put those to the side and we're going to see how cooled off these are. Fortunately, things are cooling very quickly because the others, it just came off really nicely. This is absolutely comfortable, cool room, room temperature. So let's see how these came out. Oh, wow. My dragonfly, that came out perfectly well. Look how great that is. I'm so happy. After all the frustration of the other day, having it come out right is, is like a big, huge deal to me. So this one feels a little bit warmer. So I'm going to just finish cooling this off, making sure nothing's hot. And it may be because the board underneath is hot and it's transmitting some heat back up there. Right now the whole table's warm from having ironed on it. All right, I know I'm flapping and you can't see what's going on. I'm just trying to make sure it's good and cool before I peel it back because that dragonfly came out so nicely. I was hoping this would do the same. Oh, look how well that came out. So pretty. Okay, so, and it actually did, where I had some lesser release on some of these others, it picked up and completed the pattern. The only place it didn't get was right here um, where I didn't iron it hard enough. So we're gonna put the board back. Yes, we can use our fancy cutout shapes for ironing as well. <laughs> uh, and I'm going to get a little tiny piece of this that's fresh. If you have problems with ironing, uh, with your HTVA not releasing on the first time, don't put a piece of foil that you've already used, already treated with heat, 